Welcome back to my weekly recap of Titans Episode 4 titled Doom Patrol. Just debuted on Friday earlier today. I got a chance to watch it. Now it's time to talk about it. I'm going to talk about Doom Patrol in a little bit. Obviously, this episode featured the Doom Patrol very heavily. I'm going to talk about Beast Boy first because I've been dying to talk about Beast Boy in the show from the beginning. And finally, we actually get to see and feature Beast Boy in an episode of Titans, and it was awesome. They start off in the episode, they show you a flashback to the Congo a couple of years ago. They show you that Beast Boy was dying from some kind of disease. In fact, he was in a village of people that were dying, and then the doctors were just kind of like, ah, screw these people, they're dead anyways. And then there's a doctor that comes in after every other doctor has left, and Beast Boy's like, help! And then the doctor's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna experiment on you illegally, and I'm gonna try to cure you. Thus, Beast Boy, as we know him as he stands in present day, was born, where I guess he developed the idea to shift his DNA around, and now he can try transform into a tiger. When we catch up with Beast Boy in this episode, he runs into Raven. He obviously saw the explosion that happened at the church, and then Raven gets to see him transform into a tiger. So they're kind of like, oh, it's you. All right, let's hang out. He decides to take her back to the mansion where he lives at so he can introduce her to the rest of the Doom Patrol. Now, the one thing I will say about Beast Boy early on in this episode is that they nailed it. Like, from a mannerism and characterization standpoint, that is the Beast Boy that I want to see. I think the actor's name is Ryan Potter or whatever. He just gives off this really good vibe, this really good energy. He's really likable. That's what you want from Beast Boy. Seems like in this episode, no matter who he's interacting with, he has really good chemistry. He has good chemistry with Raven. He has good chemistry with the rest of Doom Patrol, in particular Robot Man. That's just something that's really great to see. It's great to see the intro to him and his powers and his origin, sure, but it's also really great to see the way that Beast Boy interacts with people because that's the way I can envision seeing Beast Boy interact with people on a weekly basis going forward, especially when he meets the rest of the Titans. Also not clear in the show whether they're going to call him Beast Boy or whether he's going to be Changeling, because if you read the comics, you know that he was actually Changeling at first, and then he became Beast Boy. I don't know, it doesn't really matter right now, because he's not Changeling or Beast Boy, he's just Gar, or, you know, Garfield Logan or whatever. Point is, I'm very excited to see more of Beast Boy. I'm glad we got to see more of a spotlight put on him. When he takes Raven back to his home, we get to meet the rest of Doom Patrol. And if anybody did didn't know they're actually creating a live action Doom Patrol spinoff series that's going to be on the DC Universe app. This was really our first real introduction to the Doom Patrol and that's really what it felt like. It felt like an introduction, a tease of sorts. You get a little bit of background on each character, you get some really fun character interactions. Definitely Robot Man was probably the highlight of the episode for me. You definitely do feel the pain that this guy is feeling. Like there's that scene where they're having dinner and they're eating and everybody's enjoying the food and he can't really enjoy the food because, you know, he, he's Robot Man. More to the point, can we just point out the fact that it's really great to hear Brendan Fraser's voice and see him getting some work, man, that was like, that really warmed my heart up. Fraser is just one of those recognizable names, one of those old recognizable actors that you actually don't get to see that much anymore, but he was in a lot of really good shit growing up, especially the Mummy movies. And it's just really great to hear him and see him. You get to see Robot Man reminiscing. He's touching some pictures where it looked like Brendan Fraser was, you know, he was a race car driver or something like that. And his voice is absolutely perfect as Robot Man. So it was great to see him. It was great to see Mr. Negative. It was great to see Elastigirl. Great thing about the character interactions is that everybody felt like they fit together perfectly in the same universe. You don't want to have certain characters feeling like they belong in a different show or they belong in a different universe. Everybody feels like they fit each other like a glove. And you can tell that Raven, after everything that she's been through, she just wants to be around people who understand her, people who get her, people who accept her. And that was the great thing about seeing her interact with Doom Patrol is that they might have felt weird because she's an outsider, but she did a great job at making them feel like, no, you're actually not that weird. We're all weird. Let's all be weird together. Together. Meanwhile, on this side of the episode, other shit is happening. Dick and Corey are actually trying to track down Raven. They go back to the church. They see the explosion. They're trying to find out where she went. Eventually, they track down these two hunters that crossed the paths of Beast Boy and Raven in a scene earlier in the episode. By the way, the CGI of Beast Boy's tiger it still looks pretty good. And they're trying to get answers from one of the hunters, but once again, Dick Grayson shows how unhinged being with Batman has made him. He nearly beats the dude half to death in front of his son. It's at this point, Starfire has to pull him away from the guy. She's like, whoa, whoa, okay, okay. You've You've clearly got issues. You've got some shit you need to work on, bro. I don't know that you're in the right frame of mind to be looking for anybody right now. I mean, I get it. I understand why you need to go back and get Raven 
and you've made some mistakes and you're trying to make up for it, but dude, you gotta chill. You can definitely tell what's going through Starfire's mind at this time. She's like, yeah, I mean, I'm still gonna sit on your face later, but I wanna know what I'm getting into, you know? Most of the episode focuses exclusively on the Doom Patrol and Dick and Corey trying to find the Doom Patrol. When we cut back to the Doom Patrol, you see that the Chief and the Doctor has decided he wants to help Raven. He really wants to try to get to the center of what drives her powers, and he's trying to cure her or whatever. Unfortunately, there might be somewhat of a cost to curing her. Raven gets scared when she gets strapped down on the gurney. She's like, hey, dude, I'm out. I don't want to do this anymore. Chief is like, no, no, no. I know what's best for you, and, and we need to do this because we need the show to showcase your powers a little bit more, so I'm going to keep pushing. Beast Boy stands up to the dude. He's like, nah, bitch, leave her alone. She doesn't want to do it. I will stand up to you. I will bite your dick off. Okay, well, okay, he's probably not thinking that, but he's thinking I will turn into the tiger and the tiger will bite some part of your body off in order to keep you from doing this to Raven. So please just let her go. Then he like sucker tranquilizes Gar and Gar gets knocked out and then we see Raven and she's like, okay, it's time for Raven Unleashed. She basically Azeroth Metrium Zenthos is his ass without actually saying this shit. A bunch of dark energy shit just comes out of her and it levitates him and throws him against the wall. He breaks his back. Luckily, Dick and Corey arrive at the mansion just in time. It was kind of cool to see there was a bit of a standoff between them at first, like a Mexican standoff. The rest of Doom Patrol is just sitting there and just kind of like, okay, you need to get out of here. And Dick Grace is like, nope, not leaving without Raven. And Starfire's like, okay, you go get her. I'll, I'll take care of these people. That one small interaction that kind of hinted that shit really could have gone down where Robot Man and the people are stepping towards her. They're like, hey, 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 we're, we're pretty tough to deal with. You don't want to mess with us. And she's like, yeah, okay. Same thing, and her eyes glowed green. Starfire is such a badass on this show, seriously. Make a long story short, Dick Grayson goes to Raven. He admits that he was wrong. He was wrong about the way he treated her. He was wrong about the advice he tried to give her. And right now, he really wants to be there for her. He wants to be her mentor. He wants to be her friend. He really wants to help her. You really feel it this time. You really believe him this time. Luckily, Raven believes him too. Otherwise, she could have levitated him across the room as well. The best thing about this episode is that we finally get Gar and Starfire and Dick, and we get Raven, and they're all together. Fi finally, the team of Titans has finally come together for the first time. Seems like the end of the episode was actually kind of rushed though. Like right after Dick stopped Raven from like opening a portal and dooming the rest of humanity or something. Like immediately after that the rest of the crew gets together and then Robot Man and the rest of Doom Patrol are basically like hey Gar you should go with them man. You should go live a life. You have a chance at a better life. We we're, we're freaks and we have to stay here and look after the doctor. Gar just basically like oh Okay, and then he grabs a bag, and then he joins Dick and Corey and Raven in the car, and off they go. The Titans are together. They're not a team yet, but they're at least together. I don't know why, I just felt like we needed a little bit more brief time at the end of the episode to actually process what was happening, but then Gar just kind of goes, nope, I need to be with the Titans, and, and here we go, and so off we go. Guys, this is actually one of my favorite episodes of the season. I love the interactions with the Doom Patrol. I love the interactions with Beast Boy. I love the little backgrounds and the little hints and teases that we got about their backgrounds and their origins and their powers. The nuclear family and the guy that that I suspiciously think is like Brother Blood and the Church of Blood. They're back and they're going to be looking for Raven again. And it looks like they're going to be kicking the Titans ass. That means we get training montages next week. Oh, it's going to be so awesome. It already looked like Starfire and Raven were combining their powers. I can't wait to see that shit. Definitely thought it was one of the stronger episodes of season one. Can't wait to see more Doom Patrol. What did you guys think of the episode? Put whatever you thought about the episode down below in the comment section. Please like and subscribe to the Super Fan Show. And as always, if you like what you see, tell me how you feel and stay tuned to hear more from the Man of Steel. Peace.